Do it. I'm Rosales, Nick Sanchez, coming to you from FightHype.com. We're at uh, Beachfront 301 in uh, Huntington Beach. We're here for Aaron Toehill's debut on American Gladiators. Uh, first off, let me just say congratulations. I've known you for a while. It's been a long, crazy ride, <laughs> and it's about time that you started getting some, you know, some accolades here. Uh, yeah. How would you say the uh, uh, the treatment was on American Gladiators? What do you think about the whole thing? The treatment on American Gladiators was incredible. Everybody was amazing, and everybody from the cast to the crew to in the audience and the contenders. It was just an honor to be a part of that and, and a blessing and an awesome stepping stone in my career. So I was very excited. How did this opportunity come out? I was cool. And when I watched it on TV, I went, oh my God, Gina's on there. I was like, I could have been doing this too. It was really exciting for her. But I had, um, when the second season, when they were recasting, there were two girls from the first season that were injured. and. They had a casting call, thousands of people showed up, and out of thousands of people, me and one other girl were picked as the two new girls, so pretty amazing. Timing's everything. I agree. Well, speaking of Gina, you brought Gina into it, so let's just go ahead and ask you, what was it like working with Gina and uh, also Leila Ali, somebody you know very well? How, how was that? Gina was awesome. Uh, I've run into her a couple other times, and I think for obvious reasons, when we talked about this, we were a little sketchy, kind of warming up to each other because I know potentially we could fight. But really, we had a great working relationship. We threw all the, the business stuff aside. Um, we talked about, hey, if we fight, we fight, but let's be in the now. Let's get along. And we became very good friends, and she's really like a, a, like a little sister to me. And we had an amazing time. So I always, I'm always always going to back her in any fight she has. I helped train with her a little bit, and she's a phenomenal girl, great athlete, and uh, I wish her nothing good. And with Layla, I don't have a lot to say. We didn't have a lot to talk about, and uh, we kind of, she did her thing, I did mine, and that was it. So what's in store next? You come out of retirement, you're gonna get some fights in. What are you gonna do? <laughs> I am. I think it could only be so long that I would be able to not be, you know, competing doing something doing something. That's why something like this is a great opportunity where it is competition. I'm competing against people with a lot of great um, experience. Getting in front of millions of people on the national television show and, and just getting my feet wet doing something different. Um, I've been offered a couple different fights and right now we're looking with Pro Elite has offered a, a three fight deal and that looks very promising and if that comes about it'll probably be the end of June so just you know some uh, getting some regular stuff out of the way with that so we come to a negotiation agreement. So. Do you have anybody in mind who you're looking at fighting? Who, do they have, have they talked anything about that, about who they want you to fight? Um, no, they haven't said any names in particular, and at this point, it doesn't really matter to me. And you guys know, I've known you for many, many years, trained with you, and uh, you guys know I will fight anybody. It really doesn't matter. So as long as you know we get the respect as a fighter, we are going to get paid the money that we deserve and I will fight anybody so I don't have that I don't have a problem I never outprice myself and I don't think I'm above or below fighting anybody I just I'm a competitor so that's what I'm going to do. Let's give your uh, training partners a little props. Who do, you, who do you have training with you? Who helps you prepare for fights? Uh, what, what do you mainly train in? Uh, right now, I guess my main training partners uh, for my straight jiu-jitsu, I've been training with a guy named James Moran, who uh, is an American black belt. I've been with him on and off for many, many years. Um, right now, I do a lot of my stand-up with, I train a lot with Rob McCullough, Razor Rob. I'm his boxing coach. He does kickboxing with me. I train with those guys at HB Ultimate as much as possible and um, just to stay in shape. So depending on when I get really into my zone and for a fight, I mean, those guys will, uh, will be involved in my training, but um, I kind of go to a couple different places. So it just kind of depends on what my, what I'm looking to use in that particular fight and, and things like that. So. Are you thinking just uh, MMA or maybe boxing too for a comeback? Probably just MMA. I like the boxing. It's not my, I mean I've done well in it, but I really started boxing just to supplement my other fighting. And I enjoy it, but I enjoy MMA ten times more. It's a harder sport. The dynamics is harder. You have to be skilled in many more disciplines than you do in boxing. And uh, it, it's 
It's a thinking style. It's a boxing, but it's it's different. I enjoy. Let's just say I enjoy the martial arts. It's martial arts a lot more. And, uh, that's what I want to do. What's your state of the game as far as boxing and MMA? Which one do you think is healthier right now? And um, what what appeals more to the public? Healthier in terms of what appeals to the public. It's hard to say. I think you look at the statistics and mixed martial arts is the fastest growing sport in the nation. There's a reason why. I mean, it's the biggest demographic from 18 to 34 years old. I think what people fail to realize as well is there's more deaths in boxing every year than there ever was in MMA combined. And MMA's inception has been, you know, early, mid-90s. Maybe one, one, maybe two deaths in the whole time. And boxing there's, let's say, a dozen that we know of from around the world. So. I think when people realize that this sport is much more sophisticated than they give it credit for, it's a lot more difficult than they give it credit for. It's a very, it's a new sport, but the, it's so dynamic and so amazing, and the, the people involved in it are such a, a different level. Um, it's going to take some time for people to really appreciate that, but you know, just like anything, it takes time to grow. And I'll be here. I've been here since the beginning, and I think we all will, and we're going to see it really flourish and take over. Well, I know we've talked before about uh, uh, you started boxing because you weren't getting fights in in MMA, right? And that's why you went into the right. boxing. So, um, uh, how do you, how do you feel that's changed now? Well, that was almost a decade ago when I had my first pro fight in September of '99. I mean, women weren't fighting, let alone men weren't even fighting then. I mean, I have more fights than most of the guys do right now, and. I had no, back then, 10 years ago, there wasn't all this, you know, internet stuff. People weren't talking about this. 10 years ago, people were fighting because it was a passion. It wasn't because it was cool and we were going to get on, you know, the underground or something. We did it because we enjoyed it. So, it can work both ways. I mean, we have such a, you know, the TV brings it into the world, but also, you know, the internet and all those other things. But, um, you know, it's just... So, what else can be said? Who are some of your influences? In terms of fighting? In terms of fighting, correct. Um, I mean, I have a, a litany of different fighters that I like from all across the board, but um, I definitely would say one of my influences would be one of my first trainers, who was Sean McCulley. He definitely, he was the one who kind of saw whatever was in me at that point 10 or 12 years ago and, and really believed in me and kind of pushed me in there and said, hey, I think you can do this. Um, uh, definitely one of my coaches, James Graham. And, uh, you know, I like all different types of fighters and styles, but definitely the people that train me, that believe in me, that have seen me, and, you know, the blood, sweat, and tears that have gone into the last decade, of, those are the people who I look up to that have been in there pushing me along the way. So... So to all those people um, who don't really know anything about you, or maybe are just beginning to get to know you, uh, before we leave, do you have anything to say to those people? Well, as far as uh, a fighting style, you know, I've been doing, uh, the irony is that I've been doing ground longer than I've been doing stand-up, and some people don't know me as a ground fighter. I'm a ground belt jiu-jitsu. I've been training ground for 12 years, um, and soon thereafter was when I started doing Stand-up. I just prefer to stand up and hit people, but I think I'm an all-around exciting fighter. I come to compete. I'm not going to be boring. I'm not going to lay and pray and take someone down. I'm going to come and bang. I'm going to punch you. I'm going to hit you. And you're going to know you've been in a fight. If you come watch me, you're going to see an amazing, exciting fight. And that's what I bring to the fans. That's what people want to see. That's what I want to bring. Well, we appreciate you being with us at Fight Hype. Uh, <laughs> thank you for having us here also for your debut. Uh, much congratulations you, to you. Great. And uh, I guess we'll be seeing you yeah. uh, on the next American Gladiators. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Thank you. And just AaronToho.com. You guys can look that up. I'm always going to have stuff on my fights or what's next or American Gladiators, everything like that. So check it out. Aaron, thank you very much.